So the white band at the uh, meniscus level there, that's the uh, calibration for 12% wine alcohol content. So you, you add your sugar until the uh, hydrometer floats up to that white band. And then you'll, uh, if everything goes right and the fermentation goes completely to 12%, it'll sink down to right at the green level at the meniscus there. But uh, so I, uh, for this uh, red wine, I, I f added enough sugar to go to 16%, which is one calibration mark right there past. So, and then as you can see, this thing actually floats slightly lower than the uh, zero mark on my hydrometer. So my assumption is I got 16% or better alcohol out of this uh, wild grape wine I made. So, and I'll let this age a little longer. It's a red wine. The tannins and such need to uh, react with the other uh, components of the wine so you get a better taste. So I have to do a little interpolation as far as the scale because the hydrometer sank past my zero mark. But uh, So all my 100% uh, apple juice wines from my homemade apples, they went to 12% alcohol or a little better. As you can see, the uh, if it was exactly 12%, the hydrometer would be right about there on the meniscus, right at the uh, bottom of the blue band. That's the zero mark, but it actually sinks a little lower than that. So my assumption is it's slightly stronger than 12% alcohol. I'll say 13, 13.5%. But uh, so all my 100% uh, apple juice, homemade apple juice wines went to this. So 12% or better. So I'm happy with that. I should, I take that back, one was at 10.5% alcohol. My bottled wine, ready to send off as Christmas gifts. I tried some of my own poison here. I, I thought it was decent, but uh, let some uh, family members try it and get some feedback on what they think. So. A lot of labor here, but I had some fun doing it, so if I do it next year, I'll probably try to do it a little bigger, a little more efficient, so I won't spend as much time hand grinding the apples in a kitchen blender. That was the uh, very labor intensive. These are my two one gallon jugs of my wild grape wine I made in late September. I just I picked the wild grapes along the uh, banks of the pond out back. It was actually kind of a uh, good year for wild grapes, just the vines were loaded with them. And uh, I only put like four and a half cups of wild grape juice per gallon. It, I put a lot of sugar in there, so it's actually a very dry wine. These went to 16% alcohol. So, and if you use straight uh, wild grapes for the entire gallon, if I did that, I don't think yeast like a really acidic environment. Mm. You get a lot of acid with wild grapes, so I don't think it would have gone as high alcohol content if I used just straight. 100% wild grape juice. So I diluted it. It's four and a half cups per gallon. And I put enough sugar in there to ferment up to 16% alcohol. And it did that. This is my Macintosh apple wine. It fermented to 12% alcohol. And that actually was my target 12%. That's the amount of sugar I added. So 
And this is again 100% Macintosh apple juice, no dilution. This is my store bought apple juice. It never really fermented properly. I tried to use bread yeast to get the fermentation process rolling. That's what's recommended sometimes to get past preservatives and store bought apple juice. So I went to 8%. I was shooting for 12% alcohol. So there should be a fair amount of sugar in there still, as it hadn't fermented the alcohol. So it should be a sweeter wine. It smells good. I don't know how it'll taste. Looks like it's done fermenting. But I won't really want to drink it until I add some uh, preservatives in there, just to be on the safe side. I don't get an active yeast. Just to give some idea of the uh, color and clarity of the wine, this is my uh, apple juice wine, 100% Macintosh apple juice. We'll compare the uh, apple wine, this is my 100% Macintosh apple wine with my four and a half cups of uh, wild grapes per gallon of it. Let's see what this looks like. Got a nice color to it. Smells good. I think it'll work pretty good.